All right, welcome back to the Pure Playbook podcast where we're always trying to provide resources, information, education for student athletes and their parents, linking the gap. Uh, special guest here today, I'm Dr. Dustin Boston with the athletic trainer herself, Erin Rogieri. And if you've ever wondered where she came from, <laughs> she is with us today, Batty Bev. Batty Bev. <laughs> <laughs> Beverage area in the <laughs> house. This is Aaron's mom. This is going to be a fun one. Thank you for coming. Oh, thank you for inviting me. This is going to be, uh, this can go one of probably 16 different <laughs> ways. I'm interested to see where it goes. But uh, one reason we wanted to do this and we wanted to have you on is as we're starting to build more resources and, and more clout, I would say, in the community for student athletes, we yeah. wanted to bring the parent dynamic involved as well. Mm -hmm. So being that, uh, as we swell Aaron's head here a little bit, as I'm <laughs> looking at the banners above <laughs> us here, um, a, a six-time national champion, both on the floor, off the floor, danced all her life, was very athletic in different realms, where, but falling into dance and you taking her through that um, between you and Henry. So we're just going to get uh, a little dynamic, spontaneous, impromptu with yeah. some information from the parent side. Okay. Fair enough. Can't wait. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. I know you're shy. Yeah, I am very shy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to pick your poison? Do you want to I don't know where to begin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> well, let's uh let's go let, let's kind of take it from the top. When did you let's let's interview Aaron real quick and then right. we're going to we're going to in, intro Bev and you can just interrupt her at any point in time. You are her mom. Okay. So. That's good. <laughs> when when did dance start for you? Um, at the age of two. So it's actually a funny story. My Our neighbor growing up was a dance teacher at the studio I grew up at. Mm -hmm. And I got babysat by her girls like my whole life. And I wasn't doing very well at the potty training aspect. <laughs> and so my mom had the teacher come and tell me that I couldn't wear a diaper in a tutu. And then I took off my diaper and never put it back on because <laughs> okay. I wanted to wear a tutu. So did you just pee through the tutu or what? I don't honestly know. No, I she just, <laughs> that was it. She took her pull-up off, went in the house, got underwear on, and she never... Never looked up, back. Never looked back. All it took was she could dance with a tutu on if yeah. she would potty in the potty. Yeah. So did you have dance background? Were you in the dance world or... Uh, um, in high school... She was a pom-pom girl. I was a pom-pom <laughs> girl. Um, I was. I was a pom-pom girl at when I went to high school and I was captain two years. Oh. So you would never know it now, but yes. No, <laughs> stop. Where'd you go to high school? Eureka High School. Yeah, I went to Eureka. That was yes. that was my last regular season baseball game was at Eureka oh, in high school. Okay. So yeah, very familiar. So with some it. different memories. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. So I danced like from like two to four, just recreationally, like one time a week. And then in kindergarten I joined the comp team. Yeah. And then I did that all the way through senior in high school. So at what point did you kind of have the great idea of like, oh boy, we're in this for the long haul. She's actually good at something. Well, <laughs> actually, um, it was at her first recital mm -hmm. when Stuck. she um, when she did when she was she and two other girls did their dance, mm -hmm. and um, I don't want to say clearly she was the best on the floor, but she definitely stood out above mm -hmm. everybody else. And well, the other two started crying, right? Uh, no, one of them just stood there yeah. and didn't do anything. But she, it was just she had this stage presence that was there. Yeah. And, of course, I thought it was just me thinking it because I was her mom. Sure. And Henry, being the dad, thought the same thing. But then after that, um, the owner of our dance studio, Miss um, Lisa, came up to me and she's like, she is a natural. Mm. She needs to be on the stage. This is, this is her thing. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I think you probably tell that to everybody. But then I really realized it when I watched the videos that that was what she really liked and she really wanted to do. One take, Drake. First recital and it time. was in. Yeah. Yeah. It was, we were all in. <laughs> yeah. For Well, so let's, uh, then let's talk about dance world a little bit from that perspective at that age mm -hmm. because I don't think I don't think people really understand and and we're talking about all athletes so this is going to be we talk a lot about dance we see a lot of dancers mm -hmm. Aaron is one was one coaches it um, so we do tend to talk a lot about dance but at, they're all athletes in their own right mm -hmm. but I don't think people understand the uh, 
uh, maybe I shouldn't say that say it that way, but I think there's a lot of people that could know more about how much they do, how much time's invested, the costumes, the rhinestones, the workouts, the yeah. six days, the the dress rehearsals, the all the extra stuff. So as she started into dance, like how how did that transition your life? Because you're a nur- you're a nurse. Yes, I'm a nurse. I work full time. Um, I think the first year she was on the team, she only did one dance. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that I was pretty blown away the first, you know, the first couple competitions because I had no idea what to expect. Mm -hmm. And I was, I, there was one mom that kind of guided me and took me under her wing and I kind of watched her. And so we did one dance and then the next year it was two to three dances. And it was hard getting her to practices after school because I worked full time. Um, luckily, um, Henry's mom, her grandma, was very flexible about picking her up and getting her to dance um, so that she could be there because she was at, she was a dance six days a week. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was from after school until like nine or nine thirty at night, mm-hmm. which um, her dad did give some pushback because he's like, she needs to be home sleeping. She needs it. <laughs> well, she doesn't really sleep that much anyway, so <laughs> it didn't really matter. And um, she, but she never complained. I yeah. mean, I was like, oh my God, you know, what, how is this going to, how are we going to do all this? How are we going to fit this in? And but she was always, and I told her, when it's not fun, we're done. Mm-hmm. When it's not fun, we're done. Mm-hmm. And she never said it wasn't fun. Yeah. Um, she would come home tired. Um, and then as she, you know, started like the next couple of years, she had like seven or eight dances. And then um, I think our max one year was we had 15 dances. Yeah, we, we were we hefty there for a while. 15 dances, two solos, a couple trios. Um, so that was a big thing, but I think the thing, like you said, people don't understand what it's like on the on the parent side of mm-hmm. it, because you know they all see everybody her out on the stage and you know the trophies and stuff, but they don't understand the the heartache and what we do and the work that we do because we have to make sure that we she gets there. You know, we had to get as dances grew, we had to get a bigger duffel. Mm-hmm. We had to make sure that the costumes were all sorted. They all had to be labeled. We had to make sure we had all the extras. Um, everybody used to call me at the studio that um, I was kind of the um, mom of the dance moms mm-hmm. because I my dream sure. duffel had everything in it you could need. I had a first aid kit. I had sewing kits. I had ice packs. I had ace wraps. I had you name it. IV candy. bags. Yeah. <laughs> Just I about. I IV bags, but... <laughs> Um, but I was, I always had everything. I was prepared. So when somebody needed something, they came to me or they'd t- ask Aaron, where's your mom? Yeah. Cause you know, um, and then, you know, so the I think my mom was more popular at the studio than me. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think the thing that the other thing is that when you're a parent of, of a, especially a dancer that is totally driven by dance, it wasn't like she did dance and we tried T-ball she was She's on doing cartwheels and the well, posies. Yeah, well, she was on a, a co-ed team, and she was hitting harder balls and more balls than the boys were. <laughs> so she, d- but she said that really wasn't for her. So I was like, okay, good. That's one less thing I have to try to get her to. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, as a parent, you're trying to make sure that they're getting there, and you're behind the scenes are making sure that she has healthy snacks, making sure that she. It, you know, has food to eat, making sure when she gets home that you've got everything ready to get her ready for school the mm-hmm. next day. Um, and sometimes, you know, I I probably babied her a little more than, than maybe I should have as a parent because I would, a lot of times, if we had a, a three-day competition, I would let her stay home on Mondays when we yeah. didn't get home until 10 or 10.30 at night. Um, one of her dance buddies, her, she, her, she, her mom would say, Maggie's going to school the next day. <laughs> there is no other. Um, and so that, you know, that part of it. And then when they come back for quick changes, literally they walk in and they're stripping and you're trying to get them on and they're like, don't touch me. I, you know, and she was hot and sweaty. And so trying to do that. And then, you know, sometimes she would be like, mom, I could do this by myself. <laughs> and so then, I, you know, and then I'd try and then she'd say it again. And so then I would just back up mm-hmm. because I knew if I didn't step back, it was probably not going to end well yeah. um, because Aaron and I are a lot alike. Even Whoa, though, what? <laughs> yeah. She's, um, she's kind of outspoken. I don't know if you oh, noticed that. Yeah. And, um, 
I knew that we would clash heads. Yeah. So then what I would do is I would pull um, Sam in to go in and kind of, I'm like, Sam, and she's like, I'll take care of her. Mm -hmm. And so she would go in and kind of get her ready, and she's like, she's good, Mama Bev. She's good. Um, but that's hard because a lot of times then you barely get out there to see the dance because mm -hmm. you're running from backstage to get out there so you can watch. And then as soon as that dance is over, you're running back behind stage again to get to get her ready for the next dance. Yeah. You know, and that that's it's tough sometimes. Well, and it's 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 so good that you kind of, sh you know, shed your experience and, and light on that, because the biggest thing that we want to do, too, is just create a community for parents. Mm -hmm. It's like whether you're the parent of uh, a dancer, lacrosse, football, like you all should like all the parents share a similar story. And here's what the two of us really want to get across is we see that yeah we get it we value that because as a parent it can be very frustrating it can be very overwhelming you know you've got work you've got you've got patients you're taking care of and mm -hmm. in a higher stress job as it is with a lot of responsibility and it's like no matter no matter the the parental involvement it's a lot I don't care how mm -hmm. many sports it is whether it's one or five yeah it yes. doesn't really matter so just know for you parents out there that are listening like we get it and this is why we wanted to do this yeah, is because right. just sharing a little bit of that you know like I said whether it's a, a dance floor or a soccer field or whatever it's it's all very similar in mm -hmm. nature um, so but at the same time don't discount any other sport compared to any other sport right. because a lot of people you know don't know and dance in St. Louis area is huge it is huge it's it's a hot spot we say that all the time there's a lot of talent that comes out of this area um but it's it, it is a lot for parents for it sure is, what are I some of the things you did for you or did you i was gonna say i think we what, should go to like the sacrifices you both made um, so i could dance yeah I, there wasn't a whole lot i mean we didn't we had one family vacation that we always went to which was down to black river lodge mm -hmm. but as far as um other things um, we had to sacrifice things. We, you know, we didn't go out to dinner very much. Mm -hmm. We didn't go do to the movies. We didn't do things like that because you had dinner and a show right here. Right, exactly. <laughs> and um, there were times that family members would say to us, uh, you know, how much are you spending on dancing? Oh my God, I can't believe you spend that much on I dancing. I hate that statement. Yes, it, it, I you hate know, it. it just and and Henry, you know, Henry was pretty much the opposite of me. He was very quiet, which is probably why we got along so well. <laughs> a Trent, um, literally a Trent. Well, yeah. really? They're the same. Yeah. 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 <laughs> because he would literally say, whatever, Bev, whatever, yeah. whatever. And, um, and then he would say t to even his family or anybody, this is what Aaron wants to do, and whatever my baby wants to do, that's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And that's what my girls want to do, and so we will make it work. And, and we did because, you know, that, that was how we did it. At one point, in order to try to, when she jumped up so many dances, he and I were cleaning the studio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We cleaned the studio um, three times a week so that she could be there and, get, and do what she wanted. So yeah. it, it is. And it's, I would say with any sport, um, it's like a full-time job. Yeah. It's another second full-time job yeah. um, because her brother was also – um, a, an athlete. He did football and he also did wrestling. How much older is he? Uh, 10 years. Yeah. Okay. He's 10 years older, um, which just thank goodness. Because Gave a little I, breathability. <laughs> a little breathability <laughs> because I, I can't imagine as a parent having two athletes that are very driven and trying to, to get to everybody and make sure that everybody is where they need to be and they have everything they need to be um, because you know, as the parent, you've got so many things. You want to come to our house and hang out and help <laughs> us? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> she just gravitate towards Cammy yeah. and all yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could take Cammy. Yeah. That would be the good one. Yes. Um, but it, it it is it is a lot, and you you don't you know you like oh I have to I might work five shifts in a row so I could be off a dance weekend, or you know work four days we'd be off for four days and then work five days after that. And the twelve-hour shifts get get wrong, get long. Yeah. Um, so as far as self-care for me, probably not a whole lot. I think, but I, I I say that one way a little bit kind of either way because for me the dance moms and I know you know everybody thinks about the dance mom show that was on <laughs> and um, don't get it twisted. Yeah, and it, it, that's not what it that's not what it was like for us. Our yeah. dance studio was. Um, our moms were very cohesive mm -hmm. together. We worked together. We, you know, when, when they'd go to conventions, we'd all sit out in a circle. Um, the we, red solo cups. Yeah. And <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, sometimes. Um, that was trivia night. That was trivia. And, and so then one of the things we did is I started planning a trivia night for, you know, so I even got to know more parents and we got to do more things together. Um, and that, that was, I think that camaraderie and that compassionate was a really good thing that helped us all be, survive that. Um, it be, and we used to do that at the studio too, but then once she started driving, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I don't need to go to the studio because she can drive. Mm -hmm. And that was a very hard thing for me to mm -hmm. kind of step back and let her have that independence. So when she first started driving, I would still go up to the studio, like when she was in class and sit and talk to some of the moms, or we would go to Breadco or we would do something because it was kind of like a withdrawal for me mm -hmm. with her being there and, and, you know, and seeing her make that transition. And, um, you know, we suffered a, a great loss when she was 16, when her father passed away. Mm -hmm. And then I even more wanted to be there and be on top of her. Um, but she quickly like grew up yeah. and, I, and I can't say before that, that I ever thought she was, I thought she was very dependent on both of us. Mm -hmm. And, but when that all happened, I saw a side of her that I'd never seen before. Um, she was extremely independent. She got her, the, the month and a half that he was in the ICU, she got herself up for 6 a.m. practices every morning. She had her, her, she took care of the dogs. Then she would go and go to her practices in the evening till 9, 930 at night. And then she would come back and repeat it all along the same thing. Um, so that was, that was kind of remarkable to see that in her. Um, and also it, it was a little emotional tug sure. because I'm like, Oh, she's growing up, Yeah, you know? Um, but it was great to see that in her too. Um, Where do you think she got that from? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I think she had some pretty good role models. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I think the, the diligence and consistency, um, I think that's very easy to lose. I mean, especially the generation of parents and how, how the, I'm going to have an unpopular opinion here. here <laughs> my, my, my status quo You're bold statement. Our <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Or I'm going to spike does. them one way or the yeah. other. Uh, I, I always say, like, our generation of parents were really like it it's so different now compared to our generation of parents. Mm -hmm. I could only hope that our generation of parents would shine through more of the current generation of mm -hmm. parents. The the consistency, the authority, the um, the discipline on both sides, not only discipline of getting up at 6 a.m., yeah. but like the discipline of like, no, you're not talking to me like that. Like you're going to hold yourself accountable um, because there's no way she just randomly came up and did that on her own. There was a lot of consistency on your part. So thank you for being awesome. Both um, of you for being <laughs> awesome because that doesn't just come out of thin air. No, oops. <laughs> no, I don't. I, I agree. I mean, I think it was a lot of work because she's very headstrong, as mm -hmm. we know. Um, and so there were times that when I would set guidelines, um, her dad would be like, oh, she doesn't really have to do that. I'm Baby like, yes, girl. She does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, yes, she does. But the thing that, um, you know, Aaron was a, a surprise 40th birthday present. Oh. Um, and so, <laughs> <laughs> so that made it, I think it made me also realize how important those years are because you know, Brent was going into middle school at that point. Mm -hmm. So he was growing up and doing that. And I was like, I'm never going to have any other children. And then surprise. <laughs> and so it made me realize that I wanted to be as involved with her as I could. I was super involved with Brent also. I mean, when he played football in middle school, I was the, the football team nurse. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I wanted that involvement with her also. Um, and I think you know, one of the things, because my son is a coach, he coaches football, and one of the things that, you know, he talks about is give me a, a, an athlete who may not be as good as somebody else, but somebody that's coachable and respectful and mm -hmm. wants that drive, mm -hmm. and that person is going to work harder. And when those parents are there seeing that, you know, but it still starts at home. Yeah, You have to have you know, it's not just, oh, let's drive by, drop the kid off and come back when it's time to pick up because then you miss so much of what goes on with your child mm -hmm. and and seeing your child excel in something and yeah. being there to, to share that and being able to give that 
positive reinforcement to them because being an athlete is hard. Yeah. Juggling everything is super hard. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the ability to do that and see that has got to start at home. Yeah. You've got to be, you got to be able to do that. Amen. Yeah. Preach. Amen. Preach, <laughs> Mama. And, it, and it's so easy from a parent perspective to work the hours we work and see the patients and put in, you know, 12 hour days, 14 hour days, and then just be, want to come home and just relax and then not be involved. Or it's like, Oh, have somebody else bring her home from, from practice mm -hmm. or, or studio or whatever it is. And, um, I think you're so, so right. And I'm, I'm glad you went that route. I didn't even yeah. have to guide you no, that route. Yeah. You knew exactly where to go with that. Yeah, I mean, it, it is because I mean, there were times when, when I was working as much as I was working and, um, I would go to the studio and I would get there like a half hour before she was going to be done. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'd sit in the car and take a nap. Yeah. I set my, you know, I'd take a nap so that I could be, you know, but I was there mm -hmm. and, you know, and then I'd go in and be like, okay, I had a power nap. Now I'm good to go again. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to put you on the spot. Kay. I'm going to see if you answer this the way I hope you oh answer gosh. this. Oh, gosh. This that, will be good. That scares test. me. Here we go. That yeah. scares me. Did you ever, at what point in time, or did you ever really realize how much they were sacrificing to make sure you could do what you did? Honestly, not really until, like, I think probably, like, junior, senior year of high school. Mm -hmm. Like, after, like, like she said, we lost my dad whenever I was 16, and, like, her and I, her and I were always close. Like we had the dance thing, and like she woke me up at four a.m. to do my hair, like all <laughs> all of those things. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it was until like we actually became like not friends, but kind of that right. like I realized the things that were being done. Because for me, I just went to dance every day, and right. then I went home and got to, went to bed, and then my dad woke me up every morning with Cheerios to go to school. Like yeah. I didn't know anything that was happening behind the scenes because a good parent doesn't let you in on the sacrifices that are being had because yeah, they don't hold it against you. Yeah. It's uh well, that's, it, I was hoping that's kind of how you answered it. <laughs> oh yeah, I saw it all. It's like, I, <laughs> you know, it, it, you know, as a parent of three now myself and they're, yes, they're still young, but it's like, you know, you, I, I kind of fight with that. It's like, man, I wish, I wish they knew what yeah. I'm trying to do so they can do what they do. And, but like you said, it's mm -hmm. like, I'd never hold it against them right. and I'd never want it any other way, but it's like, it's just interesting to hear. And just so you parents and especially you student athletes, I want the student athletes to hear that more than anything is it's like, realize that shit sooner, yeah. like mm -hmm. appreciate the whole time when mm -hmm. they, when your parents want to talk to you after the game or after the performance or, you know, when they, when they want to help you get undressed, it's like, that's, that's a caring thing. You yeah. know, when they, mm -hmm. when they want to take you out to dinner and you don't want to go after a big loss, it's like, you know, uh, you never really know and understand how much behind the scenes, I don't care how much money you have, how mm -hmm. much freedom you have. Maybe your parents, you know, live, you know, work from home or maybe they don't have to work. They retired, they hit the jackpot, whatever it is. There's still, no matter what the scenario, there's still sacrifices, yeah. you know, on, on, for the student athletes regard for their best interests. Mm -hmm. um, which is why I wanted to ask that because I think the sooner that we can help, the athletes themselves realize that mm -hmm. I think the better relationship they're going to have with their parents, with their sport, yeah. with their, their future, their commitment, their responsibilities, mm -hmm. when they know where it's coming from and, and kind of know what's being given up, mm -hmm. like your parents will probably never tell you that. Mm -hmm. Like no. there'll probably be a couple things times when you get mad. It's like, do you understand what I do for you? Mm -hmm. There's times where that's going to happen. Yeah. But the sooner that, you know, you're, you're in, at least you high schoolers out there, it's like, realize what people because like you said it takes a village yeah. you weren't always the one picking her up no 14 hours you mm -hmm. know working 14 hours or in your shifts and it's like okay maybe dad's not available mm -hmm. maybe dad's not around um you know then you've got friends bringing her home and you know you're doing all this and it's like for for the parent side it's like make sure as parents like learn who's on your team mm -hmm. learn who's in the club make relationships with people because one you may need them someday. Yeah. Right. Two, it's a badass community to be a part of anyway. It's like not everybody's going to get along with everybody, but be cordial and learn who's on the team and build relationships. Yeah, I think the what? perfect example is like whenever we were, you guys were cleaning the studio, like I, I was up there and I just thought it was so fun that I had the studio to myself. Yeah. Whereas like they could have put me to work and like been like, okay, like we're doing this so that you can dance. So like you're going to help us. But in reality, what would happen is we would pull up, I would plug in my, that time, like the little iPod Nanos. <laughs> And just, like, go at it for four or five hours and ha and be like, oh, we're done? Okay, let's leave. 
Mm-hmm. Like it was just, you just thought it was da- extra dance. Yeah, time. I was like, oh, I have my own the home studio. My parents are so nice, wanting to help <laughs> pick up. Well, and I think you know you you brought up a couple of really good points when you talked about getting in meeting people, and it it can be very. Um, overwhelming. I mean, I know it's hard to believe that I can be shy, <laughs> but um, when <laughs> I can, when I'm in a new environment, yeah. I mean, when we first started dance, I was like, I sat in, in there, it, you know, out in the waiting room and I was like, didn't say anything to anybody. Um, one of the, the persons that ended up being one of my best friends intimidated me to death mm-hmm. and because she was part of the group. Sure. And I was like, oh, I can't, you know, and yeah. so I slowly kind of edged my way over to to meet people and start doing that, yeah. and and that was hard. It was, I mean, it was even hard for me to do that. Mm-hmm. So I know as a parent, um, you know, try to figure out who your maybe your first person that you might start to to gravitate towards, and then build that circle. Um, same thing when she went to college. You know, I was used to at the studio and at the high school, Mm -hmm. I was kind of the team mom and I was there for everything. And then we go to college and I'm like, you know, nobody really knew me. I was kind of like following on shirt tails of people that I knew, but you know, it was totally different. She was so busy with everything. There wasn't that mom hangout time. Mm -hmm. It was, she hung out with the team. She was with the team. And um, it took me kind of like starting to kind of just Go up to people and say, oh, you're so-and-so's mom. I'm Aaron's mom. And just breaking that, that and it's hard. You have, yeah. to, you have to push yourself to say, I can do this. But once you break that and you start building that, you'll learn who your, your people are and you'll learn where they are. Yeah. Um, and you'll keep in touch with them forever. I yeah. mean, people that she danced with at the studio we're still very close mm-hmm. with. People from high school, her coaches, mm-hmm. um, we're very close to that and close to those girls because we built that family together. Um, and I think for me, one of the hardest things was the last year at Nationals when I knew that was going to be her last time dancing. Mm-hmm. It was very, it was, it was hard for me from that standpoint, um, but not nearly as hard as it was her last Nationals from dance studio because that was really the people that we'd been with the longest. Yeah. yeah, we'd been with them since she was two. And just seeing that and and thinking, I'm never going to have that feeling again of watching my daughter dance on stage. Um, but now I'm, I'm super happy that I get to watch her coach because <laughs> it makes me feel very fulfilled to see her helping people and working with them and helping those girls that want to fulfill their dreams and, and do things and, and that parents do that too. Yeah, you have. Well, yeah. we're going to forcefully make you adopt our daughter as your <laughs> granddaughter and you can That's enjoy good. the hell out of I'm that too. With it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm game. I'm definitely game. I don't have any granddaughters. I just have no. two grandsons. Well, you do now. now. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> what's, what's something kind of looking back? I don't want to say, I don't want to, I don't know what else to say other than regret, but is there anything that you may have done faster, done differently, doubled down on, if you could go back or maybe maybe I'll lightly throw the regret word in there. Is there anything you regret not doing or doing or wish you would have done faster or doubled down on if you could go back and do it again? As far as with... Just from a parent aspect, just, I mean, I- is there anything that you can, you like can think of? You well, and that's, I think, the big thing because I think as parents, we don't realize what resources are available for us. Um, and I think one of the things that we battled off and on for different times were injuries that she had. Mm -hmm. And, you know, thinking about, you know, well, we went to the doctor, the doctor says no dance for this amount of time. And, and we leave there and she's like, I'm not going to not do that. I'm going to dance. And so I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this note that the doctor said, she says, don't give it, don't give it to Miss Lisa. Or don't, t- you know, don't because no. she wanted to dance. Yeah, I flat um, out was like, just throw it away. Yeah, same thing when she got a concussion in high school. You know, she got a concussion. She had a pretty bad concussion mm-hmm. um, during dance. And um, she was like, I'm going to dance. And I was like, well, I don't think you can. And she's like, well, I'm going to. Well, and, and she pushed. And, you know, her coach had to really sit on her. And, and the athletic trainer 
to say, no, you're not going to dance. Yeah. And, and yeah, so my brother, my brother was really good friends with the athletic trainer and the AD at the time. So that's how I got. That's that. where the 10 year gap really does yeah. not favor. <laughs> Cause he was already, he was already coaching at the same school that I went to. So I could do nothing that wouldn't yeah. get yeah. told to someone. You had binoculars on you. Oh at yeah. All no, time. I got like a, the AT coming in like the, and I was like, oh shit, here we go. <laughs> I was like, he knows, he yeah. knows. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. He was like, so your brother told me. I was like, uh-oh, uh-oh. Yeah, because her brother is very protective yeah, over uh -huh. her and always has been very protective. But I think, you know, as a parent, you don't know where to go. You know, there weren't, there weren't like the pure athlete. There was it's like they've heard this before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, there was nothing set up for us. You were kind of at the mercy of what one doctor would say or, or another doctor would say. Mm -hmm. And and then in your heart you're like, well, she wants to dance. Mm -hmm. She wants to do that. Um, and I don't know about regretting it, but I I wish there would have been other pathways that we could have gone to that I would have felt more solid with. Because you know, my medical part of me was like, well, you have to rest it. You can't do that. Right. But then my heart part was like, but she says she can do it. Mm -hmm. So I need. To, she knows her body. And so I think I need to let her do it. I think yeah. I know what you're getting at too because. Um, Lexi just said this. We recorded another podcast. I think it can come out tomorrow. Yeah. I, um, so at, at the time we're recording this, um, end of March here, this one will come out. And she had said, uh, and, and well, let me back up just a second because I want to qualify with something we say all the time is in this country, have, we have the best critical health care in the world. And we collaborate with a lot of great people. There's so much stigma about the us versus them from the sides of med medicine and, and health care. It's like, no, 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 not here, not yeah. with us, not here at all. So let me just say that first. And we have the best critical health care in the world. Um, however, Lexi said it best and I never thought about this is it's like no matter what doctor you go to we just need more doctors that understand and literally look through the lens of an athlete mm -hmm. and if they never were one it's that much harder yeah. you need to find another one and if you are a, a doctor healthcare provider and you deal with a lot of student athletes just consider looking through that lens for a second and speaking that language versus the asinine bedside manner that's just like, no, nope, you're just going to do this. This is what it is. Like, we get it. You're authoritative and you have some sort of pull. But if, but if I throw that piece of paper away and nobody exactly. ever sees it, yeah. like, mm -hmm. you know, so, but considering, like you said, is it's like having somebody that thinks through that realm, has your best interest in mind, explains what's going on and delivers it. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. Mm -hmm. Delivers it in a manner. It's like, look, I know this isn't ideal for mm -hmm. you and I know you want to watch your dance and I said but in this scenario this is what has to be done yeah. versus just like okay yep yep a plus b equals z take four of these every three hours do yeah. this and then it's just like you're done yeah. it's like what well and I think that especially um we were very fortunate when Aaron was in college at the beginning of COVID which you don't think that's really fun but um, she injured her ankle really bad. Mm -hmm. and It was we broken. Went, huh? It was broken. Yeah, and we went to a sports athlete, athletic orthopedic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who understood what, because he had been an athlete. And so he's like, I know you want to dance, and I understand that. I understand that drive. But I don't want you to try to dance one time and ruin your ankle so that you can't dance your junior and senior year. Yeah. And, and then put us with a physical therapist that also understood that yeah. because I, I totally agree with you. If people don't understand that drive, what athletes feel and see, because it's not just something, oh, I'm going to go to dance. That, whatever sport they're in, that's in their heart yeah. forever. I mean, totally forever. My son, when he was in high school, his senior year, got a call from his math teacher. Your son doesn't want to do homework. He does, you know, and, and she'd say, and I'd be like, well, why? And she said, because he's studying the playbook. He's trying to study the playbook to make sure that they're going to do well. Mm -hmm. Well, that that that's that heart part of being an athlete. It's just that different. You can't, right. You can't put that into somebody. But if they have that, you have to understand that. And you have to work with it, not against it. Yeah. The last thing you can do is scold them for it and take it away. Yeah. Right. That's the worst thing you can do. Right. Like you might have the ability to do that. And, ha you know, somebody might have the authority to do that. Well, if you don't pass this class, you're done. <laughs> and if you do that, you better consider, you better double clutch on that decision because, I mean, Lexi said that too. Yeah. It's so funny. I mean, she's like, athletes just think and respond and talk 
different. Mm -hmm. And it's not a bad thing. It's just not everybody understands what that that vision, that drive looks like. Mm -hmm. Well, and as a parent, that's not something that you instantly get either. Because I think as Erin was young dancing, and I understood that she loved to dance, so we did that. But I didn't understand where her head was really coming from. Mm -hmm. It took a lot of time of watching her and listening to her for me to understand that. And I don't think until she got in high school did I really, really feel that and really understand where where she was and how she looked at things mm -hmm. and, and what what made her go, what made her what was that driving force behind her mm -hmm. to be the best she could be. Yeah. And th that as a parent is is kind of a hard thing to, to get to. Yeah. yeah. Because you sometimes you don't have time in your brain to let that in because you're trying to figure out how you're going to juggle everything. I mean, I can't imagine juggling multiple kids and multiple yeah. sports. Um, and, uh, you know, I was lucky. I was, I was actually very blessed that I got to devote time to Brent when mm -hmm. he was little. And then when he was in high school, you know, she was starting out dance, but she wasn't like gung-ho dancing. Mm -hmm. um, and so we were able to kind of space that, I guess, would be the, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. best way to put it. No doubt. What what is what is your greatest memory of each child's athletic career? Mm, that's a good one. Oh, um, like if you could go back to this one scenario, this one weekend, this one game, or doesn't even have to be a game, but this you know just what what would be moment your moment of time? I think probably with Brent, my oldest, was probably. Um, the game that you and I went to in Carthage, he was, they were playing in Carthage, Wisconsin, and just seeing him, I mean, he knew we were there. He would always look up and we'd get this look and, you know, he wouldn't wave because that wasn't cool. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, he'd look up and give me the head nod. So he acknowledged that we were there. Yeah. And, and then I think probably the, the greatest with her was probably – watching her do her solo that she dedicated to her dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That just, I mean, it was a tearjerker. There wasn't a dry eye in the audience. But seeing her put all of that emotion in there. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I didn't tell you I was doing that beforehand. No. Shocker. No. But everybody knew what it was about. Yeah. Yes. Except for me. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so that was just, you know, that was just a moment that I'll treasure forever. Yeah. Absolutely treasure forever. What's your greatest moment of your mom? Oh, gosh. <laughs> There's so many. Um, I think the, the most funny one, so we had these parent dances at, for recital. <laughs> She's like, I know exactly <laughs> where this is going. We had, like, the parents would do a, a get up <laughs> <laughs> at recital, and Bev took that with full stride every time. <laughs> she did it all the time. Yeah. It was... Not necessarily, if you watched me dance, you wouldn't know that that's where she got her dance. Mm -hmm. um, but it was fun. Yeah. yeah. It was fun. And it was, you know, again, it was a connecting thing with parents. Yeah. And um, it, 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 was, it was a laugh. We all, you know, the parents hung together. The kids got the biggest kick out of it. I think they were like. Oh, yeah, we always like giggled. Yeah. <laughs> because one time we had a practice um, off at somebody's house. And then we came in to, um, perf to show the, the, the girls. The practice, The eh? practice. And um, we have had, had had a couple of beverages during practice. No. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can remember, you know, her looking at me and her and one of her friends and like, are you drunk? I'm like, no. We're like 10. I'm we don't like, even know what that means. No, you're not. I'm not drunk, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Was All I, I hear is pit bull in my head. Yeah. Fireball. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. But then I... <laughs> <laughs> but then I think the, mo the most, like, a serious one would be after my senior year of Lionettes Nationals after Jazz prelims. Like, just seeing you after that. That's, like, a mm -hmm. – that's the photo I have framed for you. Yeah. But that is one of my favorite moments. Yeah. It was, like, a like a culmination of so many things just in one hug. And, get it, yeah, getting that hug and being able to hold like you don't ever want to let go. Yeah. Yeah. That was a completeness, mm -hmm. it yes. sounds like. Well, that year's Nationals was... So good. Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. And then even... I mean, that was so complete for me as a dancer for mm -hmm. you. But then going to Nationals with you last year and seeing 
you coaching and the mm -hmm. connection that you had with those girls that you had danced with yeah and seeing them when they won and that joy that I mean I felt like you were even happier than when you won yourself yeah, yeah honestly yeah. You know? <laughs> and, and I kind of felt like I was more nervous when you were coaching uh-huh than when you dance. Yeah, it's more nerve wracking. Yeah, hundred percent. And I thought, why would I? Do? You know, I thought it won't be anything different. Oh yeah, it was a whole lot different. Yeah. Because it's so much different. Yeah. Because as a as an athlete, you have control over what happens in yeah. a game and a on the floor, or whatever. But I tell my girls all the time, I'm like, the second that I leave you backstage, like I can't do anything. Right. And like that feeling. Well, that too, and for the most part, as an athlete, like you're responsible for yourself. Yeah. And yeah. then to see to see it all come together and, and to have your hand in 8, 10, 12, 18 mm -hmm. members of a team mm -hmm. and to, yeah, be a little helpless, too, to be like, all right. But then to watch it all happen, it's like, selfishly, you should think for a second. It's like, I did it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just for me. And it, anytime, and I talk about this just on the mental side, it's like anytime you're in a point of lack or you're upset, it's like, give. It's like if you're having a bad day, buy somebody a coffee, mm -hmm. wave at somebody in the aisle, meet somebody new, like give, give, give. So there's nothing like I don't think I don't think the human brain is able to be more proud of something that you do for something else compared to something that you do for yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's possible. Yeah. I had a similar scenario, too, when I called it quits for my baseball career. No regrets at all. And then stayed with my aunt and uncle back out in L.A. for a little while. And we won the Little League World Series mm -hmm. with my cousin. And I was like, I would trade in every accolade, every game, everything, every relationship I've ever had from my own career to do that all over again. Yeah. I'd throw it all away if I knew I had to to make that happen. Yeah. It's, it's different. It yeah. is. From a parent's perspective, I haven't been there yet. But I think to watch <coughs> that maturity, a little bittersweet a little bit, but it's like to see at, from a parent's perspective to watch your daughter do that <coughs> is probably a whole different level of pride hang on just a sec go for <laughs> it drink it up well and like you said i think watching her dance was always i mean i was just always in awe <clears throat> and but then watching her coach and and seeing her teams excel and win and you know this year with her at the high school and getting to go to Chicago with them, yeah. and getting to witness that, and 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 I was in the front row. I was right center <laughs> front row. No I, way. I was the first one in there. I got my spot, and that's where I sat all day long. Yeah, we just brought her food. We're like, you cannot yeah. lose a spot. So, <laughs> seeing her girls do that, and seeing watching her when she was there, when the girls were dancing, and seeing them exceed, made me, I think, even more so realize the drive that she has being an athlete mm -hmm. because also I see her worrying about her team, worrying about her girls, making sure that they're healthy, making sure that they don't get hurt, making sure that she does the best that she can do for them. And, and that makes me even more proud because I see that she's growing up to be a really good adult. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about well, adults. Okay, well, maybe I should say growing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, don't say growing adults. up. Yeah. I don't know about yeah. adults. She's becoming a great adult. I don't know <laughs> yeah. if I put growing up in there yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She kind of vacillates back and forth. <laughs> As we all do. Yeah. I mean, you know. Oh yeah. Well Absolutely. It, you brought up something else about how about the brain and doing something good for others sometimes when you feel hurt or when you do anything. And and I'm a person that I like to do things for others. Mm -hmm. And um, with our latest, you know, with me with the breast cancer and then losing my dad, uh, so many people are like, you have to let us help you. What can we do yeah. for you? You have to do yeah. this. You have to do that. And that's really hard for me yeah. mm -hmm. because I'm a person that likes to, I like to help people. And I like to give to people. Um, and it, it, it is hard. It's very yeah. hard to, to step back and do that. But, you know, I've, I've had that and I'm kind of like, okay. Maybe I can let somebody help me. Mm -hmm. But that's a very hard thing to do because I'd rather be doing something for somebody else. Yeah, absolutely. And I would 10 out of 10 recommend that a lot of people let that happen more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's there's a couple things. I mean, even in that scenario, I mean, yeah, we're fresh off. I mean, this was yesterday that mm -hmm. you guys had um, the funeral and things like that. 
Um, but letting people help you. There's a couple of things I tell people, and Aaron and I have had this conversation too, and it's like, and you parents, whether it's somebody, you know, hey, I'll bring your kids home from, from practice. It's yeah. like, let, just say yes. Yeah. Because you never know the joy that somebody has being able to help you. Mm. Don't rob them of the joy of the willingness to help. Let mm. them do it. Like, it's, <laughs> I did it the first time I heard that. I was at a conference, and um, I won't forget it. And because it wasn't 20 minutes later, we had like a break, in the, or that, that night was over with. And it was like, okay, cool. So they had the bars and the bar and stuff outside where we could have drinks and just kind of mingle. And um, one of my friends asked me, like, hey, you want to? you want a drink? I'm going to go grab a beer. Do you want something? I was like, no, I'm g- yeah, actually I do. <laughs> and just immediately try to change that because the, the profound thing for me is like you, I don't think people really understand the joy you're robbing of somebody else mm-hmm. telling them no. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially in a time like this, you know, you lose a family member or, you know, whatever the case might be, right. or if you're away, you have to go somewhere. It's like, let people help you. They wouldn't ask you to help if they didn't want to, mm-hmm. um, and let them enjoy that process too. So I would say, I mean, that's something I try to do a lot of, and I still do it here. I'll still stutter and be like, no, I'm go- yeah, <laughs> grab me this, or actually I will, or, um, I think that's huge. I think it's a big perspective shift, but, um, there was a question I was going to ask. Now I forgot where I, I was going because you get me on a passionate rant of like letting people do things <laughs> for others. Um, well, I guess kind of along those lines, this is where I was going. This is what I wanted to ask is before we started talking, you mentioned it a little bit, but you're like, I knew if I didn't back off, like we'd be button heads. <coughs> so I'm going to kind of lead this into a couple different ways and you can take it wherever you want as we, conti- as we kind of wrap up because I know we're all probably hungry. But what would be some advice you would give to parents of student athletes, but in some of those intricate scenarios where you had learned, it's like, oh, I might want to, what advice would you give to parents and be on the lookout for? I think the the biggest thing that I wish that I would have done very early in her dance was paying attention to what she was saying to me and telling me instead of me thinking, I have to be here, I have to do this. I have to make sure that you have everything because that's my role as the parent. Mm. Instead of looking at it through her eyes, mm-hmm. you know, because, you know, the emotional roller coaster that any athlete goes through yeah. when they're doing things, um, you have to, uh, it's, and it's a hard thing to do, you know, because you look at them and you, but you have to really look into their heart and watch their cues. Mm-hmm. She would give me cues all the time but I just ignored him. Yeah. Um, the same thing with my son. He would give me cues and I would be like, you know, after the game asking all these questions about the plays and stuff. And he'd be like, mom, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. A- and she will do the same thing with me when I'll say, well, what was this or what was this score? Why did that, you know? And she'd be like, mom, I don't want to talk about it. And I'm mm-hmm. like, okay. And uh, you know, I learned probably about her junior year in high school Um, that when she told me, I don't need you back in the dressing room, that I needed to stay out of the dressing room because I would be like, you don't want me? No. And she'd tell me, it's not that I don't want you. I don't need you. And I know in my mind what I need to do. And you being back there sometimes kind of just frustrates me because you're trying to do things your way and I need to do things the way I know I need to do them to get ready to get back on the stage again. Yeah. And, and I was blessed that we had, you know, I, we had Sam that could always intervene. And, you know, she would tell me. The spy, yeah. if you will. <laughs> she yeah, was. She was. I'm like, she, you go back there and you can, she, she's like, I got her. You mm-hmm. just stay out here. You sit and watch and enjoy things. But that was a hard lesson to, to kind of learn. And I wish I would have learned that earlier because I think it would have saved us a lot of headbutting sure and a lot of things that we said to each other that i know we didn't really mean yeah but we both said it out of frustration Mm -hmm. i think a lot of parents need to hear and uh, i'm going to kind of bring it from both sides the student athlete and the parents both is parents need to know that you've given them the tools to do exactly what they're there to do at some point in time you're going to hear that That is not an attack. That is not a, I don't want you. That is not an, I don't need you. That is, and the student athletes need to come off and like, 
I would I would even prefer. Hopefully, my kids learn to tell me this one day. It's like, look, Dad, you've given me everything I need to be successful. Mm -hmm. You have to let me do it, mm -hmm. and that's hard. That's hard for I think that. But you can't take it personal. No. Like you can't because you will. Emotion oh, clouds all judgment. I did. <laughs> I mean, I took it really personal when she said that. And now that I look back on that, I'm like, okay, she was, without her coming out and saying, get out of here, mm -hmm. she was trying to tell me that because that's where it was leading. Mm -hmm. But I think as, an, as a parent, you want them to succeed the absolute best they can be, and so you don't want them to have to worry about anything on the outside. Mm -hmm. And I think as an athlete, it's hard to tell your parent back off yeah you know so I, I think it, it will take a lot of open and I think that's the big thing open communication yeah open communication with your athlete from the word get-go mm -hmm. because if you don't open that communication neither one of you is going to feel comfortable saying what you need to say and that's that's the key to it yeah know? well and so I, I think that's a good point too and it's another it's another hard one for maybe parents but I'm going to jump on a soapbox here and we're going to dive in as we're going to wrap it up with, with this. But sometimes I think parents need to know sooner. Like if you go that route, if you don't have the open communication, if you don't see it through their eyes a little bit and mm -hmm. give them a little bit of space and learn what their cues are, I will confidently say you're costing them success. Yeah, absolutely. You're costing them points on the floor. You're costing them a batting average. You're mm -hmm. costing them a mental aspect and morale in the in the in the dugout yeah. or in the locker room. You are you do have to let them go and do the thing. And if you have a problem with that, maybe there was something you should have done sooner that you're feeling guilty about. Another hard conversation to have from a parent perspective. But if you're going to continue to try to make it all okay and pave this perfect way and let me grab you this and what can I do and be in their face and always want to be, you're costing them success. Yeah. You're costing them performance. And growth. Absolutely. And so, and that's hard. But here's another thing that I want parents to understand that I think might help get there sooner. And I see this all the time. I saw it yesterday. If your child, if you are so upset and aggravated and appalled at your child's attitude and snippiness towards you, you might want to reflect a little bit. Yeah. Some kids are just assholes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, there, there are, you know, but at the same time, I see so many kids like, mom, mom stop, dad, just stop. Can you just leave it? Can you just, and they get so snappy. And it's like that in, in itself is a cue to be like, look, Hey, let me grab your check. No, just don't touch me. Just don't grab my stuff. Just yeah, yeah, might need to have an open line of communication, but not right then and there. No. You need to kind of step back and be like, how have I been? Is this something maybe I have created? How have I been involved? Have I been all over? Or, okay, now that that's passed, how can we have this conversation and just ask? And it's not like, why the hell are you so snappy with me? It's more like, hey, hon, like, what's up? Yeah. here's how I'm feeling. I'm just going to say this one thing and you can have the floor. But you, I think understanding that dynamic is there's one thing of just being a, a rude teenage kid. Mm -hmm. And there's another thing that's like, okay, what's, is there something prodding this? Yeah. Yeah. I think I read this somewhere that like, and it, I, every athlete is guilty of it. Every kid is guilty of it. Mm -hmm. But you like get this preconceived notion that like your parent isn't living it with you like yeah. <laughs> I forget exactly how it went but it was basically like the same time that you're experiencing life and like all of its first and all those things like so is your your parent yeah and so like giving them grace of like they haven't been a dance mom before and like they haven't had to do all these things before like it's not like they become a parent and you know everything right and so like giving them grace on that aspect like yes reflect and look in the mirror but also remember like it's the first time for them to to do that yeah and I've, I guess I've been kind of hard on the parents, but um, also, but on the student athlete side too, is it's like, have some respect. And like you were saying, like, understand that we are trying to live it with you mm -hmm. and for you. And we are coming at it from a great space. Most of us, I think there's some parents out there that are way over the top and way, I think people, I think kids quit sports in the car um, mm -hmm. with a lot of parents. It's like, why did you do this? And what happened here? And da, 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 da. Um, however, 
as student athletes, I think we need to give our parents a lot more grace, give other parents a lot more grace, whether you like them or not, whether they speak to you the way that you prefer it or not. Just know that chances are it's coming from a good place. Yeah. And they, too, are a little reminiscent in their own right. It's like, man, my dad told me that the other day. I went last week, put the motor in the race car, and he's like, man, just hearing that, I want to get it in and drive it. And I used to take that as like, why can't you just let me have my my thing? Right. Like, you got to race for 20-some years. Like, I'm following your footsteps trying to make you proud. Mm -hmm. Like, there's we, have, we all have these stories. And then what I learned is it's like, he that was his life too right. mm -hmm. and it's like it, it is hard to watch somebody else do something you love that you can no longer do or are no longer doing so there's a whole dynamic there that i think young student athletes need to realize too so the next time you want to be snappy with your parents open the line of communication or just take a deep breath and be like look can we talk about this in a second because i just need a moment here so i don't be an ass to you like yeah, and I, I think athletes need to do more of that. i think not to make this going on any longer but i think the perfect example like for us is like when they're looking at going in schools and colleges and stuff, like there was a period of time where I didn't want to stay here. I was trying to like run away from other things that like had happened. And like she knew, my whole mm -hmm. family knew that I wasn't going to be successful going five hours away and that I wasn't going to enjoy that. But like there was a time when to not intervene too yeah. and be like, yeah, go ahead, try it out. But then Figure you're also, you're going to be the first one there whenever it doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. And like, it's okay to not intervene and have them, learn that lesson because everyone knew that I didn't wasn't going to actually be well five hours away like I am a homebody and so like letting them kind of fail forward in that aspect of being the person who takes them to the tryouts and being the person who does all these college tours but knowing it's going to happen how it's supposed to because you've again taught them prepared them yeah, yeah. so good what else? Any other tips, tricks before we shut her down? No, I, th I think that know. makes a mean meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> Drop the recipe. <laughs> Drop the recipe below. Hey, if you got tiny veins and need an IV, this gal is it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think the other thing too is, you know, being not only being open, but like you said, you brought up about not talking in the moment. You know, we all here, if you're in any kind of af athletic field at all, 24 hour rule, 24 hour rule. And you know, there were times like I knew, like I would like kind of snap at her and do things. And the same thing with my son. And what I should have done has been like, but I don't think the 24 hour rule really wasn't a big thing mm. back, you know, back then. And now giving, and then as I coach cheerleading, I, she was my coach. I, yeah, <laughs> I coach cheerleading <laughs> middle school. Um, I was the mean coach. My other coach was the good Shocker. coach. Shocker. My <laughs> athletes listening. Yeah. Um, I think making that 24-hour rule, and I learned to really understand that and respect that. Yeah. And, um, and I think that's, that even applies to if you have conversations at home mm -hmm. with your spouse or whoever or your kids, give them that. Because when you're in that moment, you're going to say things that are going to hurt and things that you don't really mean to say, but they just jump right out of your mouth yeah. and you can't. But if you think about it and you kind of look at it from both sides, then you have a better perspective of what you're trying to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Sometimes I like to have it happen faster. I might see if I can cut that down to like a three hour rule. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be okay. But yeah, <laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah. Taking the time, reevaluate, let it cool off a little bit. Calmer heads prevail, prevail. Um, very good. Yeah. Well, it's a good one. That is a good one. Have you enjoyed your time? I have loved my. Time. I know you've been on a lot of podcast's and you're very <laughs> oh, famous. <laughs> yes. You know, I'm everywhere. I just had to fly in for this one. Um, you know, um, no, I have I have enjoyed this immensely and um, I feel very honored that you asked me to come in and do this. Of course. Can't leave Batty Bed about. <laughs> the first parent First intentional parent. I mean, I, we've had guests that have kids. Yeah. But not from the we parent perspective. About like, the yeah. first parent on the Pure Playbook. Yeah. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> what do you say we go to lunch? Okay. Let's do it. Game. All right. All right. See ya. See ya. <laughs>